Hey guys, Richard Oldner here and welcome to the channel. Today it's all about snow boost cooler water meth injection. That's right, but here's the question. Do you have to use the expensive boost juice, which we know works very well, or can we substitute inexpensive windshield washer fluid? I don't know. Let's find out. In this video, we're going to take our 3800 Series 2 L67 Supercharged V6 with no intercooler, and we're going to run water meth. And why are we doing that? Because we've run the boost all the way up to 15 pounds, and this application definitely needs charge cooling. So I'm going to show you how well water meth injection works, specifically the Snow Boost Cooler System with their boost juice. But then we're going to answer the age-old internet question, the myth that's out there. Can we substitute windshield washer fluid for the more expensive boost use and if we do what happens okay guys we're going to, have to go through this stuff pretty fast we got a lot of data to cover this is all about water meth injection on our supercharged l67 the supercharged little v6 motor and we're going to run it obviously without an intercooler because it didn't come with one and we're going to try to cool the charge air with a water mess system and we use a snow boost cooler with their boost juice and we're going to compare that later on to the different forms of windshield washer fluid but i wanted to show you what water meth does and why it's necessary to retune it after you put one of these systems on so this was our l67 it had the l32 heads on it that we had redone you know done a valve job and fixed the seats and stuff on just so that they sealed and we ran this thing with the gen 5 uh m or l32 blower with the l32 throttle body and intake manifold and we ran it with a 3.2 inch pulley making 14.8 pounds of boost and here's what our combination we also have long tube headers on it the holly hp management system this combination with no water meth just the way that we run it normally on the engine dyno running e85 this thing made 352 horsepower and 371 foot pounds of torque and here's what happened after we added the snow performance uh water mess setup with the boost juice and we selected a number two nozzle which is the smallest one that that we had so basically just kind of missing it in there and you can see it made very similar power down just slightly maybe compared to no water meth and i'm going to show you what happened both to charge temperatures with this setup and also to the change in air fuel ratio which could demonstrate why we need to retune it and the big change here is we also installed a number six nozzle and you can see in green, the number six nozzle had a dramatic effect on the power. We lost a ton of power, and I'm going to show you why. We had a lot of charge cooling, but we also had a dramatic change in the air fuel ratio, which we then had to go back and tune to get the power back up to where it was and also have the charge cooling. So let's check it out. Now that we've taken a look at the change in power offered by the water meth, we saw we lost a lot of power. We introduced a lot of meth from the bigger number six nozzle and went from 352 horsepower down to 323. I wanted to show you the change in charge temperature, and then we can take a look at the change in air fuel to demonstrate really why we lost all of that power and how we had to tune it to get it back. First, looking at the charge temperature, this is our charge temperature curve with no water meth, just the 3.2 inch pulley on the Gen 5 blower on our 3800. It rose to a peak of about 14.8 pounds and starting about 8.2 or 8.3 pounds down here at the bottom. But the associated charge temperature with that run started out at 137 degrees and then rose to a peak of 192. Now here's what happened to the charge temperature when we introduced the number two nozzle. We turned it on at nine pounds and then uh, it was all in by 14 pounds. And we dropped the charge temperature. The starting temperature was 124 degrees and it ended up at 177 degrees. But here's what happened when we ran our number six nozzle. Let's see. See a dramatic change in, in charge temperature there. We started out at 120 degrees. We dropped down to a low of 105 and eventually rose a little bit back up to 110 degrees. The other thing I want to show you is I also ran other nozzles. And as you might imagine, uh, you know, when we would go um, up in nozzle size, we would see basically a change in uh, charge temperature. So like here's a number five nozzle. And here's also another important one. This is a 
So we can see here successive steps in changes in charge temperature with more uh, water meth flow. Now you can do this two ways. You can do this either by different nozzle sizes, which we ran a bunch of different ones. And also you can do it by the different onset points and the maximum point. So you can change the amount of uh, water meth that's being supplied just based on when you, when you start it and when you want the thing all in by. If you have it all in all the time, obviously it's gonna maximize the flow rate of any given size nozzle. Now let's check out and see what happens to the air fuel curves. So this is a very important point that a lot of people don't realize about water meth injection. They think that you're just adding it and cooling the charger, but what, act, what you're actually doing also is, especially with the fuel portion of the water meth, depending on the percentage of fuel you're running, you're changing the tune. And so I'm gonna illustrate that. This is our, this is our air fuel curve. I know it looks a little bit jaggy, but you're talking about, um, this is only a two tenths of an air fuel point. Uh, scale. So you'll see that this will all flatten out when we start to look at something that has a bigger change. This is almost nothing, basically. So this is was the air fuel curve of our supercharged 3800 with just the 3.2 inch pulley and no water methanol. And we went from, it was, you know, 12.0 and it dipped down to 11.8 and was, you know, in, in the 11 nines or so range. So it was tuned pretty well. And here's what happened when we added our small uh, number two nozzle, you can see that even just a small nozzle, as we saw, dropped the charge temperature, but it also had an effect on the air fuel ratio. Because all we did was add the water meth. We didn't make any changes. This thing doesn't run closed loop. We All we did was introduce the water meth the way that you would, and we changed the air fuel curve on this thing by as much as four tenths. So if you wanted the air fuel curve to be the same with the water meth, you'd now have to go in and subtract fuel from your fuel tables to get them to be the same. You could get rid of the water meth and it would be the same, but you wouldn't get the charge cooling. And we see this even more dramatically when, when I show you the, uh, this was the number six nozzle. So again, no changes to the air fuel other than adding the water meth and adding, and we got, you know, big cooling changes. It went from 192 down to 110. So we dropped the charge temperature by 80 degrees by adding this big nozzle, this number six nozzle. And, you know, with our initiation points and our endpoints, this worked out really well for charge cooling. But you can see it had also had a dramatic effect on the air fuel curve. It changed the air fuel curve from 12 down to 11. And even in, in, at the initiation point, it was down in the 10, it was down to 10.2. So what we had to do to get this thing eventually to, to push it back up and get it to make the same power with the water meth as it made without, is we had now had to adjust the air fuel curve with our tuning, with our Holly HP management system to bring the air fuel back in line after introducing all that water meth. You see, the point here is that you can't just add the water meth and call it good because what will happen more times than not is you're just going to lose power. I mean, you might get charge cooling, which is going to make it safer, but you're going to lose power because you're going to rich up the mixture dramatically. Dramatically. Now let's take a look and see what happened when we compared our boost juice to the two different forms of windshield washer fluid, which a lot of guys use to substitute to the more expensive boost juice. Let's check it out. Okay, now that we've illustrated what water meth actually does in comparison to not having it, we showed you what happened with the charge temperatures and with the air fuel curves when we added the boost juice from the snow performance piece and the fact that we had to make some dramatic changes in the tune to even out the air fuel ratio after we added enough water to change the charge temperature. So now we're going to compare the boost juice to two different types of windshield washer fluids, which are very common. They're inexpensive. Guys use them all the time. We have one that's rated at 32 degrees, which they sell very common in California. And the other one is negative 20, which has a higher alcohol content, I think. So we'll check out and see how each one of these does. We're going to take a look at how the effect of charge temperature first, and then we'll take a look at the effect of power. And know that before we take a look at the power, we had to retune each one of these because obviously they had a different amount of fuel that they supplied. So we had to even out the air fuel curve on all of these and show you what effect each one of them has on power. But first, let's take a look at charge temperature. We had our non-water mess system just running the way that the blower is with the 3.2 inch pulley went from 137 degrees to 192 degrees on a single pull and here are the charge temperature curves for each one of these this was the snow piece with a with the boost juice this was our 32 degree and this was our negative 20 
And you can see they all offer a pretty fair amount of charge cooling. They all brought it down to 110, 112, 114 degrees, starting out near 120. These are all runs where we could start at the same temperature because that's very important. If we start out at a higher temperature, they'll start out higher and then they'll end up at a higher temperature. So all of them offered very good charge cooling, but there was a big difference in power. So now let's take a look at that. Now that we've demonstrated that they all offer very good charge cooling, the boost cooler and the 32 degree and negative 20 degree versions of the windshield washer fluid, let's find out what happened with the power. So this is our combination with no water meth, 352 horsepower and 371 foot pounds of torque. Here's what happened when we added our the snow with the boost juice. We were actually able to duplicate the power output of the uh, no water meth version and it took some tuning to do that when we first introduced the water meth as we showed it had a dramatic effect on the on the uh, air fuel ratio so we had to basically strip fuel out of it to get the air fuel ratio back up to what it was and even with the other run with no water meth and we were able to do that we saw a little bit of a loss at the very very top which I think we could adjust the onset and full on points to probably change that a little bit but the big change was, um, the, the thing that I like about this is I wasn't really expecting the water mess system to add power. A, a lot of people think that it works like nitrous and that it adds a ton of power. We even tried another degree of timing with the lower charge temperature and it didn't seem to be very responsive. We tried that on all three of these different versions and it just didn't respond just like it didn't before we added the water meth. So that was an interesting deal. But the thing is, with the water meth, we added the uh, windshield washer fluid, we replaced the boost juice, run, we ran these with the same onset, the same nozzle, all of that, none of that changed, and we evened the air fuel out on all of the different systems. Here's what happened when we added the negative 20. So the negative 20 windshield washer fluid, um, <clears throat> even though it offered very good cooling as we saw, it does not make the same power as the boost juice did. So maybe the um, fuel that they're using, the alcohol that they're using in the windshield washer fluid is not as good as the methanol that they're using in the boost juice. Um, that's probably the case and we'll see that even more so when we go to the 32 degree version, which <laughs> must have very little fuel in it because it made even less power. But the power went down from 351 or two down to 338 horsepower and torque was down to Here's what happened though when we added our final test with the 32 degree windshield washer fluid. Big change in power when we added that. And again, remember, this is at the same air fuel ratio, same timing, all of that with plenty of charge cooling as we saw. But this would, the power was all the way down to 317 horsepower. Yeah, and torque was way down as well. 356 foot pounds. So it just goes to show you that um, the water mess systems work. They do lower the charge temperature, but using the right stuff is definitely going to make a difference. Okay, guys, let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what's the takeaway in our little adventure testing water meth injection on our Root Supercharged 3800 V6? Well, we learned a lot of cool stuff. First of all, sometimes you get what you pay for. And no, this isn't a sponsored video by anybody. But if you're out there and you'd like to sponsor the channel, please hit me up. But I digress. In this video, we learned that water meth injection does work. I'm a big fan. It always does what it's supposed to do. As we saw, both the windshield washer fluid and the more expensive boost juice lowered the charge temperature dramatically. I mean, we saw changes of 70 or 80 degrees, which is definitely beneficial on a root supercharged application where you're trying to run like 15 pounds and your charge temperatures can get easily over 200 degrees. Water meth, definitely beneficial for lowering the charge temperature. But I also showed you another thing. Sometimes, and this is very important, you get what you pay for. Yes, the boost juice is more expensive and both of them lowered the charge temperature, but one of them made more power. And if you wanna make more power, there's really only one choice. I'm Richard Holder, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. More 3800 and other kinds of testing coming up.